Hey everyone, Jared here. And today I am going to help you determine what size top and side links you would need if you would like to add a top and tilt hydraulic function to your tractor. So what I have in front of me right now are the factory default mechanical links that came with my Kubota L3560. So this is the top link here and my side link here. So the first thing we are going to do and write down is I'm gonna take measurements, dimensions of the holes for the pins. So I'm going to use my digital calipers. And that is 0 0.760. And I'm pretty positive the other end is the same. Yep. So those are three quarter inch pins. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Top is 0 0.760 and 760 T and B for those pin holes. Side length. Top is seven, five, eight. So once again, three quarter inch hole. And I usually use this hole. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this one just because it's less likely to be rounded out from use. Point six, four, eight, five. I'm pretty sure that comes out to five eighths. Five divided by eight is 0.625. Then we're going to just double check and make sure it's not size next size up. 11 sixteenths. That is 0 0.6875. So no, that's that's 40 thou off. So bottom pin is five eighths. Now, the reason it is important to measure those is your top link is going to be pretty standard. Uh, they are industry standard for Cat 1, Cat 2, Cat 3, so on and so forth. What is not necessarily standard is your side link because this is going to have nothing to do with connecting to an implement. Some of the side links you see may have three quarter bottom, 11 sixteenths top, vice versa. They're gonna have different dimensions. So you're gonna to need to make sure that you get a side link that has the correct pinholes, or you're gonna to have to figure out how to either buy one undersized and drill it out, or drill out your arm, your bushing, or bushing it up. So now that we have the pinholes measured, now let's go ahead and talk about lengths and measure those. So what I would recommend everybody do is you're going to want to take the collapsed and extended measurement of each piece. So we're going to start with the top link. And one thing that I've already done is I've taken the jam nut and I've run it all the way to the end. So unless you plan on taking that off, I'm going to run this all the way up to that. And that is going to be my max travel for this end. I will run the other end all the way in, bottom down. These need to be and playing with each other. So I unwound them just enough so they are on the same plane. Now, when you're measuring hole to hole, you don't need to worry about eyeball in the center. Measure from the far one side of that hole to the same side of, of the next hole, and that will give you the middle. Now, 
This is roughly 20 and three quarters. So top retracted are 20 and three quarters. Now we're gonna go all the way the other way. I'm really surprised this isn't out yet. Ooh. Okay, some of these I'm sure will unscrew all the way. Mine does not. That wants to stop right there. So we're gonna back that off just a little bit. And now we'll move to the other end. Now, if yours unthread all the way and come out, what I would recommend you do is hold your threaded tie rod part up next to the center section and figure out how many threads overlap you're gonna to need to get through the threaded part of the body. You're gonna want a minimum of that much overlap for thread engagement. You don't want to have only two or three threads or you will pull that right out of there. So now we'll lay this down. And that is roughly just shy of 31 and three quarter, maybe 31 and 11 sixteenths, but we're right down 31 and three quarters. And that is extended. E. Okay, so now we will set that aside. And we'll do the same with our side link. Your side link may be built different. Mine has a locking collar, so when these are pinned on a tractor, it can't go anywhere. And all I gotta do is lift up, and then that will move the body section. I'm gonna go backwards this time on this one. We'll do the extended first. Okay, mine has a Mine has a machined recess in the threads there. I'm guessing that is where they want you to stop. So I'm gonna take that back up to where that is not visible. And now we will unthread the top part. Same thing. Machine groove, we're gonna back that down. and get a rough dimension on this. Side links will often have more than one hole, depending upon where you need your arms to be. If you need them higher, if you need them lower, your three-point arms will also usually have multiple holes. So if you're using holes that are more towards the rear of your tractor, towards the implement, you may need to use the bottom hole to give this a little bit of extra reach. If you are using one closer, you may only use the top hole. Otherwise, if you use the bottom hole, it might put your arms down too low, all the way into the ground. So make sure to the hole that you are going to use. So mine is just under 20 inches. So extended 20. Now let's retract. And if you haven't figured out, obviously, one end of each of these pieces is going to be left-hand threads. Oh, this guy's gonna to be tough because he, he didn't have the paint scraped off of him. And one's left-hand thread, so when this amount in a tractor and you thread or spin the body, one side is threading in while the other side is also threading in, but in order to make that happen, one has to be left-hand threads. That is as far as that guy will go. Now 
going to try to roughly center the ball in there. And that is about 15 and 5 eighths. That is retracted. So now that you have these dimensions, that will give you a very good starting point to go pick out a top and tilt or only a top or only a tilt cylinder for the three point of your tractor. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I do already have top and tilt. And I started off with a Kubota factory top and tilt kit, but I have since replaced the top cylinder with one from AMA that has dual pilot operated check valves, which I will explain that in a future video. In the side link is still the Kubota. I will probably be replacing it as well. But what I'd like to do is compare the dimensions I got measured from these to what comes in the factory kit. This factory top and tilt kit is part number L8388A. And this is designed to fit both Grand L's and MX tractors. So how do the dimensions of these compare to the factory Kubota kit? The top cylinder retracted stroke of the hydraulic cylinder is 21 and a quarter. The mechanical link is 20 and three quarter. So not too far off, about a half inch shorter on this than the cylinder. Top link cylinder extended is 34 inches and the mechanical link is 31 and three quarter. So the hydraulic cylinder is actually two and a quarter inches longer when fully extended. Now let's compare that to the AMA cylinder that I purchased. The AMA cylinder retracted is 20 and seven eighths. And this is 20 and three quarters. So that is almost, I mean, that is almost exactly the same length. Extended, the AMA cylinder is 31 and 7 eighths. And this length is 31 and 3 quarters. I mean, once again, pretty much identical. So uh, I had not measured this ahead of time to, to pick out my AMA cylinder. I actually just hopped online and picked out one that was pretty close to the factory Kubota cylinder that I had. But now that I'm comparing these dimensions, the AMA matches it even closer. Now, if I was to have to pick a cylinder that did not match these dimensions closely, what would I do? For the most part, I am going to want a cylinder that may be a little, a little shorter rather than I would longer. If I have, if I have the tractor there, and I have my implement behind me, the likelihood of me needing to really pitch that implement down is gonna be pretty unlikely. I would rather have it shorter so I can tilt it up more. Now that's obviously going to be dependent upon your implement where you got a cab, stuff like that. Be careful, you don't wanna, you don't wanna suck the implement up into the back of your tractor. But the reason I want that is when I load my tractor with an implement onto the trailer, I use my top link, shorten it up, suck that implement up. That way I'm not dragging the implement either on the trailer or in the ground when I'm loading and unloading it. So I would rather have it a little shorter than I would longer. But here for me, once again, doesn't matter. The AMA cylinder is exact. So the tilt cylinder, factory retracted length is 15 inches. The, the mechanical side link is 15 and 3 eighths. Though not bad. The cylinder will retract about 3 eighths more, but for all intents and purposes, that is pretty much the same. Tilt cylinder extended length, 20 and a half inches. 
This link, 20 inches. So the hydraulic tilt cylinder goes about a half inch further. That is actually perfect. We have four and five eighths travel on our mechanical side link. I have, I measured roughly five and a half. It says that it's a five and a five and an eight stroke. So my measurements may be a little off there on the hydraulic tilt cylinder. But the fact that I have five inches or more, I already have more travel than I do with the factory mechanical side link, which is perfect. Because if you're gonna be grading, the more travel you have, the better to correct for grade or to cut ditches, swales when you want to. So before the video is over, if you guys can do me a favor, can you go down into the comments and let me know, do you have a top and tilt cylinder? And if you do, what do you think about it? And if you don't, do you plan on getting one? And then if this video is helpful, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up and like the video. Then subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified of upcoming videos. And as always, have a great rest of your day.